Skyrim Anniversary Edition has got a whole bunch of followers, creatures and pets that you can go and grab. Some of these have been part of Creation Club content for years now, but I thought I'd give you a rundown of how to start the missions and pretty much anything else you need to know about some of these. I've done individual videos if you want more help in getting some of them, but otherwise enjoy me showing you how to get a new face other than just Lydia and some pretty unique pets, which you absolutely need for survival mode especially. The Bone Wolf is a non-threatening creature, basically it won't attack any enemies, but it does do 25% extra damage against undead. It also counts as a separate pet entity, so you can go ahead and have another pet if you want. You do have to play a bit of the game to get this though, you're going to have to complete a bunch of quests for the Steward of Solitude, which basically has you completing or killing a bunch of necromancers trying to raise Patima, an ancient oblivion god. The first port call is to Wolf Skull Cave, which is just to the west of Solitude. Stopping the initiation ceremony or the summoning ceremony here will then lead to more quests after a period of time. Once you've gone back to Falk to tell him you've completed it, you then have to wait maybe four or five days and go on and travel to other areas to also then get a letter from a courier. Eventually you'll come to the crypt of Patima underneath the Solitude Hall of the Dead. Once you've done this, you have to wait for another letter from a courier to tell you about another location where the Bone Wolf will be. Just southeast, underneath the actual Blue Palace, you will find a necromancer here with some Bone Wolves that you have to kill, and then you can rescue the Bone Wolf that's inside the cage. If you come here beforehand, you will not see any of the Bone Wolves or the necromancers in the cage or outside. You do have to wait until you've completed their missions first. Alongside obviously the perk against the undead, you'll also get a 200 extra carry weight with this guy that can carry your stuff. So another great addition, especially if you plan survival. If you want a goblin follower that will actually help fight as well as have some pretty unique weapon that unfortunately you can't get, you need to go to Riften. Inside the inn, you'll find on one of the bedrooms a note to Clexius, and this begins blue in the face. After clearing out a cave filled with goblins, you'll be able to rescue this one, and he's pretty decent. He's got quite low health though, at only 116, and despite being able to change his armour or appearances, it doesn't actually change anything to do with his stats. You also can't get him to carry anything, his spear is a unique weapon only for him to use. His main use is summoning a storm atriarch, so this is really cool. Basically have two followers for a good amount of time and it'll do a lot of damage. I'll bet it's a bit stupid sometimes as it will regularly attack you even if you only hit it just once. Apparently you can't send him back to any of your homes either. When you ask him to leave his service, he'll go back to Grom's Pass and be sitting in the throne room. He does count as a follower rather than a pet, so yes, you won't be able to have another follower alongside. Pets of Skyrim was a creation added that gives you the ability to have a fox, a bunny rabbit, a goat as your pet, or a skeever or a spider. You can grab these pets as soon as you come across any of their locations, or follow the quest line by reading the note inside the inn inside Whiterun. I ain't gonna lie, I forgot the name of it. It's the large inn. I won't go through them all individually, I'm saving you time. Like I said, the quest when you pick up this note will give you the directions to all of them. What I will point out though is for survival means the goat is going to be the best one to have as it's got an additional carry weight of 100 and that increases to 140 once you put a backpack on her. You'll also get some milk from her on a daily basis more or less as well. Revite has got a carry weight of 40 and again it will be 80 once you put a backpack on it. You can also ask some of these pets to find stuff for you and the rat here or skeever will find random ingredients or maybe possibly food. After that we've got the Frost Spider, Arachnia, she's going to give you 20 carrying weight and she does also put a spider web on the floor which is a trap that will cause paralysis when anyone walks over it. You will have to clear out quite a big area of field with uh, vampires to get this one, which is also part of another Creation Club content, so you may have already come across it. And again you can also ask to get some actual poison from her on a daily basis too she will give you potent frostbite venom. Sweet Roll is a fox which only has 20 carrying weight just like the spider and it can go and search out precious jewels. Also occasionally the actual fox will have a jewel in its mouth that you can just have so it regularly keep you topped up. Like all the pets you have to obviously go through the dialogue options to ask it for what it's got. 
And I'll repeat once more, none of these pets would engage in combat, but you can also have more than one of them. I do believe you can have a maximum of two of these pets particularly. So for survival, you definitely want to get hold of the goat to carry all that extra stuff and possibly either the skeever or the actual arachne. And then the last one is Thistle, a rabbit that will hunt down some ingredients for you, but it only has a carry weight of five, so it's probably one of the most useless. You can ask all of these pets though to go back to your homes, so they can be great just for a bit of decoration around some of your major properties. If you want a Dwarven Armoured Mud Crab, you can go to Calcimo in Markov and buy it from him. This one and a lot of the other pets can be actually teleported to you with spells. And this Creation Club content was created to poke fun at an article years ago that was mocking Bethesda making horse armour. It can act like a second pet as well, so it will be able to follow and join a first pet that you've already got, and it will carry 20 weight. But again, it won't engage in combat with anything else. And like the other pets, occasionally it will deliver you something like a dwarven ingot or some sort of artifact. Head to Tel Mithrin in Solfheim and just outside to the southeast you should find this dude. He'll sell you a Nyx Hound for 400 gold and again it doesn't attack enemies but will give you some additional carry weight of 75. It also too does give you a random ingredient from time to time and depending where you are it'll actually give you ingredients from Solfheim or Skyrim depending on where you are. None of these pets can be killed obviously so yeah don't worry about that and like a lot of the others you can just send it back to one of your many homes. You can grab two elytras with the Saints and Seducers quest line. You begin this by talking to the Khajiit just outside Whiterun and at various spots along the way through the quest you'll find them at locations in cages that you'll be able to unlock with keys found on bodies. They act as follower pets again, they can carry items. Now I do believe both of these have the option to give you some venom and they will help you in battle but you've got to ask them to. It does seem as well there's a few little bugs with these, get it, bugs, where they won't actually be dismissed or go back to one of your homes. So the best thing you can do is ask them to wait somewhere directly. After a while they'll eventually go back to the camps that you found them at, although I haven't got that 100% confirmed. Or if you get a new pet it should automatically dismiss that one and again they should go back to the camps that you found them at. So there are a few new followers as part of the Creation Club Anniversary Edition. You need to complete the Bitter Cup quest and choose nothing as your reward. Basically, I think it's the bottom cup. You should find this quest inside the inn inside Falkreath. There will be a journal called the Mysterious Altar. This is how you'll get Rulnik Windstrider. He's pretty much in a very bad way in the temple in Whiterun. You pretty much have to heal him and you're going to need to go and get the certain ingredients. Now them ingredients are on a special island, Giant's Tooth, that you're going to have to pay a ferryman to take you just north of, I think, Solitude or Dawnstar, where you'd have to take care of a few Spriggans to get something called Iron Fruit. But once that's done, he's got a pretty unique dagger, and he summons a Spectral Wolf to fight for you as well. And like all followers, you can ask him to wait places or swap armour, weapons and stuff and carry extras for you. Be a conjecture about whether or not he counts as an extra follower, that's what a lot of people had thought and that's what I thought when I did my first guide, but it turns out I do believe he only just replaces a regular standard follower. And then lastly you have got the Ghost of Tribunal, there's a whole bunch of different followers that you can have access to once you complete this questline if you choose the right method. To begin it, head to the temple inside Ravenrock and read the heretic diary of the blacksmith. This is a long involved quest where you're going to have to complete a couple dungeons or go around a few areas around Solheim before venturing into the temple itself, hopefully dressed up as a fake wannabe cultist. You'll pick up that armour set from the dungeon that you just completed. Once you complete all the missions for the matriarch, you can then ask the followers that we just looked at to join you. Now I said there's a choice or way of doing it, the other option is you could have come in here and just killed absolutely everyone and then you'll lose the ability to have them as your followers. There's actually four of these followers and as far as I know Vesbath the Toe is one of them that you can actually make a steward for one of your houses. So don't do what I did here and kill them all, try and infiltrate the temple, follow the steps, complete the missions and then you've got your choice of an one that's pretty good as it dual wields, that's Vesbath the Toe that I'm about to go over the body of and then the other guys as well. Vespath also has the cleaver of scent films which you can obviously swap with her when she becomes your follower and you can obviously give her some other weapons or give her something to dual wield. 
Maybe some of the other followers, they will also act in the same way. You've got Hand Kaidra and Indurba and Hand Mifla Mavandas or the Watchman Sindras. Do be warned as well, once you complete the quest line for helping out the cultists, if you gave a bunch of propaganda pamphlets to a priest in Raven Rock, he'll come actually to try and take everyone out. So there is a chance that he might be able to actually kill some of these NPCs. He'll bring three Redorian guards with him. So yeah, just be that aware. It seemed like they weren't really too much of a match, although you can see one of the cultist ordinators is dead. And finishing off this video, we're going to go to Mara's Pond, Eye Pond, just southwest of Windhelm, and this is where you're going to unlock the Gallows Hall home. It's a pretty involved quest involving poltergeists, and eventually you'll unlock it, and you can have this as your regular home. So apart from being able to turn great soul gems into black soul gems, it also does have a summoner for the undead down below. By placing ingredients in certain ways, you can pretty much summon a bunch of the creatures that you got from the Dawnguard questline. So technically, they're not followers in the traditional sense. You don't get to ask them to carry anything with you and they won't go to any of your homes, but they are an additional summons. And they will come and battle alongside you. And unlike the summons that you have for spells, these won't disappear until they actually die. So I felt it was worth including it in this video, just in case you had thought that Gallows Hall wasn't really worth your time. It certainly is if you want more battle followers. There's a whole bunch to go and summon. You go and check out the full guide that I've already done on these. And yeah, you can have skeletons, wrathmans, bowmans, etc. Not forgetting also the mist man here too. So they look pretty cool and definitely help you out. And they count as extras. So if you have this in combined with some of the necromancy skills, then you can go ahead and summon almost a whole undead army. I believe it's the Bone Colossus that summons two additional skeletons. And there we go. As far as I know, that is every follower and pet or companion you can get as part of the brand new Creation Club content. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Go and check out my armor's guide, my weapons guide that I did for all of the new content. And if you want more help with all of these, I've done individual guides for every single one of these followers and creatures. Until next time, laters.